Hi, everybody. All right, happy Saturday. In the last video, we sort of temporarily clicoed in the top cowling. So we haven't put the cam locks in yet, but we have started by uh, clicoing them in with the cam lock clico inserts, and we still have the tape on top. So that keeps the top cowling from distorting in any way. That's good. So now, as you can see, we are just filing away with the bottom cowl. Now, did you see how easily I just put that on? Let me talk about that real quick. I didn't really go into too much depth. So you can see the sawhorse I have there. That's made out of two cheap sawhorse brackets you can buy from Home Depot and some 2 by 4 uh, I don't know the exact length, but the length is important. Uh, and I have one half of those legs uh, drilled into a piece of melamine you can see there. I think that's it's three quarter inch melamine. I want to say it's six inches wide. It's something like that. And then I have some uh, like HVAC pipe insulation sitting on the top to just give it a little bit of uh, fluff. So the nice thing about that is because I don't have the legs both attached to the MDF, they flex, right? They're made to both be attached so that it's permanent, but it also has a hinge in it. The nice part about that hinge is when I narrow the legs together, it actually rises up. So the idea is that, combined with that little foldy captain's chair I've got, it's easy enough just to uh, put that sawhorse right behind the line where the fuselage is, right behind the very beginning front of the fuselage, uh, just aft of the, you know, the camlock flanges. Then you simply lift up your bottom cowling into place between the sawhorse and the fuselage. Uh, I bring that chair over to sort of hold it in place as high as it can and then I can walk around the side and pick it up the last four inches. And then I do the whole thing in reverse. When it's time to come down, I put the chair in place, I pull the, fus uh, can of, can of, uh, the cowling out until it wants to sort of sag. I let it sag on the chair, being held in the back by the fuselage slash sawhorse combo. And then put it right back on. Look at that. Because I know everyone says, oh god, dealing with the bottom cowling is a pain, especially if you have a three blade prop. <clears throat> this makes it easy. Right, so all we're doing, as you can see, we're just taking off, sand, put it back on. Take it off, sand, put it back on. Because you want to get it right. You don't want to take off too much. And it looks good. Uh, it reminds, and you know, I'm, I'm, not that this doesn't look clean, because when you see that cowling on, you don't see any cam locks. You're like, you know, you know what? That does look really clean. And my buddy Paul came by, helped me with the wings last weekend. His RV7, right? No cam locks. I'm like, that. It does look clean, but it almost looks. It's almost like I don't trust it. If I don't see the physical me mechanism holding it together, all I think is, you know what, it could be rotting under there, you'll never know, then one day just, poof, your top cowling flies up and over you and takes out your tail. Because, you you know, you weren't checking the, the pins. Who can, who can trust those piano hinges? Now the one other advantage of having this MT prop, and I sort of went into this in the last video, is that because so there's a three eighths inch gap, a three sixteenths inch gap between the spinner and the cowling, which is very tight. That is very tight, and because I have about three eighths inch of that spinner that I could theoretically sand off, if it does start to rub a little bit, well, I can always sand a little bit off. Can't really do that with the Hartzell because it's the bulkhead, so. But I will say that the van says three sixteenths of an inch. That is tight. Oh, oh man. Uh, you know what? In the next video, I'll, uh, I'll put a picture up. All right. I hope everyone's having a good weekend. Thank you for joining me, everyone. See you soon.